All right. Uh, here we are. Next episode. I'm not counting the episodes anymore because I already lost count. I can't count higher than five. And um, <laughs> But we're here. Uh, my guest today was uh, Fifi Dosh, the lovely Fifi Dosh. We, uh, boy, do we uh, get into a, a myriad of, <laughs> of topics. Um, and uh, it was a really fun time. Please, uh, let's see. Um, in May, uh, I will be in Portland. Um, I'm going to have more details about that, but I'm doing a weekend in Portland. Um, and, uh, God, I can't think of anything else. I'm fucking March 26th. I will be in Palm Springs for, uh, a, a, a festival and then back in LA for a show. But I don't know what I, I didn't write any of this down. I'm just plugging general things. This is just me telling everyone that I, uh, I have stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> this is me just making myself uh, look like I'm worthy of listening to. But um, no, I, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll come back next episode and be more prepared with uh, with details about the things I'm plugging. Um, but do you please, uh, dude, I I keep telling you guys to review the podcast. and You guys aren't doing it. You know, I have a <laughs> not a, not enough. Here's the thing is I'm getting a lot of really nice messages. I'm getting a lot of really nice messages from people um, about how much they enjoy it, but can you publicly, uh, say that on, on a review? Um, I would like that. Please subscribe to both the, the YouTube channel, the, um, whatever, Apple podcast, subscribe to all of it, leave a review. It really helps me out. Look, I even, I even, because my shoes hurt today, I went full bare feet. People usually don't get that if it's, uh, not behind a paywall. So, <laughs> I'm really just giving you guys prime content here and I need you guys to review the podcast. Um, but uh, yeah, we had a great time today. Enjoy this episode with Fifi Dosh. Everything hurts. Everything hurts. Fucking life sucks. Everything hurts. Perfect. What's up, Fifi? Hi. We got Sean. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have you here. I am too. And uh, we, okay, you know what? We became, we've become... A lot closer over the past, I don't know, year or so. Yeah, I've liked it. And uh, it's because you you started reaching out, which I need in a friendship because yeah. <laughs> I'm so afraid to reach out. That's that's all I uh, like. All like adult friendships are are just people sitting alone in a room, like hoping the other person picks up the phone <laughs> and calls them. And it's like it's like it's like anti chicken, you know. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Like, That's call me. Point. I want to hear from you. For real. Yeah. What, I, do you, what, do you, what do you think I'm going to say? Like, I, what do you fear I would say if you called me I'm, or anybody? I'm so afraid that, like, if I ask someone to hang out or text someone or call someone, mm -hmm. that they are going to feel obligated to hang out with me or to talk to me. No, they won't. And then, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid that then, like, people are just hanging out with me when they don't want to. But I think that's, uh, like, I would have to tell myself, and I think I've talked about this before but if they do feel that way then like that's their problem yeah. you know like nicole this is los angeles people don't go to events they want to go to that's true they're not gonna go to an event they don't want to go to <laughs> but i i do like i do so many things that i don't want to because like i can't say yes or say no yeah um so, like, I get so excited when people I actually want to hang out with reach out to me yeah. because I feel like, um, yeah, like, I, I'm i just always so afraid uh, to reach out. But you, like, um, I think it was, yeah, like, before the pandemic, and, well, really, like, before I, I started to get to know you, I was so intimidated by you <laughs> because yeah. I thought you were so funny. Oh, thank you. And, um, I was an unapproachable asshole also. <laughs> I think I'll I mean, um, well, I mean, you and we, we both did this, but you roasted and, and um, before I really got into it and you were so good oh. and so um, mean mm -hmm. in the best way. And uh, I still think about your roast battle with uh, um, Leah oh, and yeah. just <laughs> how bitchy it was. Oh, oh it was yeah. so great. Um, Thank you. Yeah. But it, see, I can't like, I just can't do that anymore just because I don't really like being mean. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> like, so come back to stand up recently. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I don't know how to riff with an audience anymore because like all I did was make fun of people. <laughs> <laughs> well i'll tell you i recently saw you on stage and you were at, like you still had the same confidence on Aww. stage and the same like you were so funny and it was so good to see you on stage again Aww, you're sweet Thank um you. 
Please. All right, I'm going home. I, I, hate to, I hate to break this up, but I'm just hearing a buzz. Do you hear that? Um, um no. Oh, I'm yeah, not. No, I'm, I, not I do, I'm not. I'm not wearing. I mean, I'm not wearing headphones. So I do hear it. Yeah, it's like in the room. It's not. Oh. You have really good ears. No, I don't. That's the problem. There yeah. it is. But it's done. Okay, All right. Good. Sorry. <laughs> is that, and we're back, everybody. Is that, is that cord important? No, we're not using this right now. Oh, okay. We're cool. just using the camera in that. So. Fantastic. Excellent. So anyway, I was I was very intimidated by you. Oh, and then see. you walked up to me one day at the store and you were like, I, I think you, you might have been telling me that you thought something I did was funny or uh, some podcast I was on. And then you were like, I think we should be friends. And I was <laughs> like... I would really like that, and Yay. I was so happy about it. And then you just started periodically calling me during a time where I was um, going through, like, kind of a rough time, and oh. you would call me, like, once a week, and it was, like, really uh, helpful for me. I don't even know if you know that, that, like, the fact that I had someone reaching out to me every week um, when I was, like, super, like, isolating myself oh. was really important to me. So then, um, yeah, over the past year or so, we've become... A lot closer. Yeah. And we went and we just went and saw Jackass together. Oh, God, that was fun. Which was, <laughs> you going to see that movie was made 10 times more fun with you because mm. you were just laughing so hard. Like, oh, you God, enjoyed it, was it. it was so really, much. It was an absolute delight. Also, my favorite part of seeing that is like, we, we, all, we all know Rachel Wilson from the mm -hmm. movie, you know? Yeah. We walked out, like, we walked out and we're just kind of dilly dallying, waiting to get our parking validated. And I think either I said to you or you to me, you go, was it like low key, really sexy when the, when Rachel got stung by the scorpion on the lips? And you were just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what it, I mean, I think anything like just with the lips in general, yeah. like, uh, is, uh, sexy, but then also it's just sexy that she was able to do that shit. Yeah. You know? And somebody got uh, hurt. That's always a turn on. What a woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People what, burning to death. What do you Hell yeah. What, what's like the worst thing that you would do to be in a movie? Like in, in that movie, like what do you <sighs> think is the worst thing that you would put up with? Um, because I don't think there was anything in that movie other than we talked about this. I would let the, the pig come be dumped on me for sure. Oh yeah, that's, you know. But sure. like. <laughs> that's just Friday. I can't think of something that they would be like, hey Nicole, would will, 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 you, will you do this? And I'd be like, hell yeah. And I was trying to think of anything that even wasn't in the movie that uh, I would do. And I, I, I couldn't think of like what the worst thing I would do. What do you think the worst thing you would do? I would have done most of it, but not be, to be not motivated you're by so being fucking in a movie. Cool. <laughs> no, because it's like my child idols. I'd oh, be like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, Johnny You're like, Knoxville. oh my God, I'm getting hit in the balls with fucking Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, that would have been a big deal for me. Yeah. <laughs> I got oh hit in the balls for free so much from that show. Yeah. Jeez, so. the, the ball stuff, like I can't, like with the pogo stick. It was all cock oh, and ball God. torture. It was yeah. like, oh if like, if I had to file that under a genre, I would file it under cock and ball torture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, I was at a party last <laughs> night where that was going on. <laughs> Wait, did you go to one last night? I did go to one last night. This is true. By, <laughs> okay. By, by, by one, I mean a BDSM dungeon. I, I knew we were going to talk about this Hell because because yeah. uh, Fifi one day uh, told me, she was like, yeah, so I, I just decided that I'm going to go to this like uh, BDSM thing where I'm going to be like a dom. I'm going to learn how to be a dominatrix and I'm just going to like beat the shit out of some men. And I was like, that sounds cool. <laughs> and she's like, do you want to come with me? And I do want to go with you. Uh, the first time I chickened out because I was like, I don't, I don't know. I'm scared. I was too scared. I'm going to one next week. But you called me afterwards and you were telling me about it. And I was like, this just sounds like an experience. Like it just sounds oh, like yeah. such an experience. Here's, a, here's the thing about BDSM people is like, there is a scene, like, if you go to Dungeons in the City, like, it's full of, like, really severe, we're gonna listen to, you know, like, late 90s industrial bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, there's that whole scene. But, like, there's a massive chunk of the scene where people are just giant dorks. Like, yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to a Renaissance Fair, but it's, like, the exact same people. <laughs> <laughs> like, for hilarious. real. Yeah. Um, you know what is funny? I feel like the freakiest people sexually that I've been with have mm -hmm. been the biggest dorks. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's no bullshit. And uh, so, like, I, I think that's where it comes from when they have, like, like you see the, 
the librarian they're like oh you know she's a freak it's true like the ones that are just like quiet and dorky and whatever they just like get down oh yeah like the i saw the dorkiest women last i was at this um party in camarillo this dude like this dude who like just regularly wears vampire fangs fangs around he's that kind of dude turned his whole house into a giant bdsm dungeon in like a residential area of ventura county and like they just had like a parade of dorky ass women just getting like caned on the tits (laughs) put caned in the tits oh yeah like it looked it was hard it was hard to watch Oh like just God. whap, whap, whap. Like they're in jail in the Philippines I've or something. Always want, I didn't know that people were into getting their tits slapped. Oh, very much so. That's a lot. Me and my friends used to do that to each other in high school. Like yeah. just as a bit. Like we would just like slap each other in the titties all the time. <laughs> maybe maybe some of them were getting turned on. But I feel like I feel like one of my friends who did it the most and like I kind of started the whole thing. I feel like she kind of liked it. I think she wanted to get slapped in the titty. Oh, good, good I, w- I would like to get slapped with a titty. Yeah, you could do That'd that. That'd be cool. Hell yeah. But you know what's funny is right now I am imagining with your like just sweet Midwestern accent, just you being like, oh yeah, get on your knees. No, you know? <laughs> that is what it's like. <laughs> Like, there was, this, there was such a sweet, like, <laughs> there was this time last night where I was, like, putting a guy in, like, like the stocks, you know? And, like, and like I'm walking around. And, like, I'm what's like, the stock? That's, you know, like, in, like, medieval times where you'd, like, put your head and your hands through the big board. Right. And they'd, like, throw tomatoes at you. Or yes, 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 yes. That yes. thing. And, like, like, I'm... <laughs> It's like so I like put him in there and like I'm like on it I'm just being really hot and really severe and I was like you have no idea what I'm gonna and like I I trip over like the end of the stuff and I I literally trip and I go oh geez <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like trying to, like trying to get back into character I'm like yeah well you were bad too you know and, <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez how dare you make me do that <laughs> oh my god do you, do people like to get tomatoes thrown at them or was that i mean we, i'm sure that's hilarious there are I people should... who are into like messy stuff yeah i've never seen it done but it's a thing i know people just want to get humiliated in general like that's kind of rare really yeah like pe- like in my experience people are way more into like the pain but like some of, like mm-hmm. the humiliating stuff is like that's like a bridge too far for a. L- that's a bridge too far for people who do some out there shit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think it's two different. Those are two different things. Like mm-hmm. someone who wants like a uh, physical torture and someone who wants just like psychological mind mm-hmm. games and shit. Those I think those are two different kinks. I, I agree. guess. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I like. It, it the the thought terrifies me, but just like I'm at this point in like my life where um I'm trying to and I I felt it like so much this morning uh so much fear and anxiety like I feel it all the time Mm -hmm. and especially with like um even like doing this doing this podcast like before every episode I'm like I don't what it's like who the fuck wants to hear me talk and what the fuck am I gonna talk about (laughs) like all that shit and then like it just I I I really have to like push myself as far as like doing comedy and all this stuff because I'm not naturally like an extroverted extroverted person. I'm mm-hmm. not naturally someone who like um feels comfortable in my own skin yeah. in general. And so I'm really working on being Because I don't think I'm going to get rid of it. I don't think I'm going to get rid of the fear and anxiety that I feel. Mm -hmm. But so I I think what I have to do is just get comfortable with being in it and pushing through it anyway. So like I think the only way to do that is just like get out of my comfort zone. And like because I I feel like I don't even experience things that like I would enjoy or experience things that I would be successful in or uh get get things that I would have gotten because I didn't submit for it or I didn't mm. like just everything so I'm I'm just at this point where I'm like everything I'm just like fuck it just I say yes that. to everything I <laughs> so like, yes. even though I'm trying to learn to say no to things I don't want to do you're bad at saying no and yes yeah that's isn't that isn't that a uh, uh, the a conundrum yeah <laughs> I don't say yes to myself you're just a hard maybe to life. <laughs> yeah, I don't say yes to myself. Oh, Nicole. Uh, but I say yes to everyone else. So, um, 
yeah, you know what? I'm going to say yes to myself and beat the shit out of some people. I think it'd be I'm so fun. I'm going to one next weekend. Okay. Well, next weekend. All right. We're just making plans on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like it's, uh, I think that's really cool. What was your, like, what was your first impression of it when you went to the first one? The first one, like, I was a little nervous and scared. Mm-hmm. But, like, it be- here's the thing. It becomes mundane really quickly. Mm-hmm. You know? Of course. Like, anything. Yeah, exactly. Exa- yeah. That's what, like, my thing is, like, if humans do it, it's mundane. Yeah. It's kind of mm-hmm. how I look at stuff. So, it's just, like... Like it just it just becomes rote really yeah. really quickly. But like I was scared for a, like leading up to it, and I was all like jacked up. And like mm-hmm. I remember the first time I went to it was at like a place in East LA, and like I showed up in like my full gear and like walked from my car to the studio. And I get there and everyone's like in street clothes with like a bag. And like oh, you don't fucking like oh, wear no. you don't wear that shit in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just like showed up in it, and they're like, no, we we change into the, yeah. the thing. That was like, the biggest panic attack I ever had as a kid. Was the first time I went to football practice i didn't know if i was supposed to show up in pads or not oh. and i was screaming and crying i was oh, in like fourth grade no. and i think my mother was like oh no we got a broken one <laughs> i think it was like one of, the, one of the first times but that just brought back such a memory of do i go dressed or not oh no wearing where i'm terrified of wearing the wrong thing yeah situations. or like if there's like a costume party like even as like an adult i'm like what if i go and i'm dressed up and no one else is uh-huh. and then no, yeah. like or even just, uh, that's why girls, I mean, I'm, sh- I don't know if guys do this, but girls will text each other. Like if we're going to some kind of event or thing, they'll be like, what are you wearing? Uh, and because we want to make sure that we're not like dressing up too much or dressing down too much. We just want to make sure that we're at least wearing something similar to one other person. Uh, as an X-Man, guys do absolutely <laughs> none of this at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, okay. X-Man well, we, is so funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, ab- we absolutely do. But you know what's funny? Every time one of my friends does that, I read it as a sext at first. Mm. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, what are you wearing? I'm like, wait, what? Oh, right. Okay. Nothing. <laughs> oh, you mean to the, th- you mean to laser tag. I don't know. Comfortable shoes. I guess. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about like guys in clothes, like when I started transitioning, like women came out of the woodwork to be like, Hey, I'm emptying my closet. I have so much stuff you can take. Like 12 women did this for me. <laughs> and like, that's a thing I learned that women do is like, if you have like shoes you don't wear anymore, it's like, Hey, I have these. Could you wear them? And yeah. they're constantly passing stuff around and it's fun. I had, like, again, I gave away all my man clothes, and I had some good stuff. I couldn't give it away to these fucking (laughs) bums. I literally couldn't get them to, like, find a time for me to drive to their apartment and give it to them. It's not even like they're not... It's not even like they're slobs. It's like they're anti. It has nothing to do with lethargy. It's energy in the other direction. Yeah. Women will have like exchange parties where they all bring like the clothes they don't want anymore. And they'll like all like go through. You know what? Like I think that there's stuff that one guys would benefit from to enjoy that they just don't do because it's uh, not. Um, like they wouldn't have they because they wouldn't even like want to go up to their friend and be like hey would you like want to like uh look at my clothes not look at your clothes and we see if you want the new but like you know what i know a lot of guys who are fucking poor and can't afford new clothes and it's a great idea but like that would never cross their minds to do that because uh it's like not i don't know because they just wouldn't it's like throwing a cat in a tub it just (laughs) just isn't happening (laughs) yeah so like i don't know uh it's how like i just uh we were taught we had talked about on tom goss's episode uh men expressing their feelings and that they should do that now i'm thinking they should exchange clothes i also think they should all uh try putting something in their butt at least once no i agree (laughs) i like these are these are all things that i think would just make all men a lot happier i agree and you know what is some cool trans men Mm -hmm. will do shit like that like, cause of course, because th- there's like a ton of stuff where they're like, yeah, I'm a man, but there's a million things that women do that they, are like valuable and we ought to do. They've you know? experienced the other side. Yeah. <laughs> you know much, yeah. But you know how much shit I want to take through with me from being a man? Fucking zero. Like, <laughs> nothing. Nothing Not at all. Thing. Nothing. <laughs> I don't envy men at all. Your lives are nasty, brutish and short. Like you, you run everything to make your existence tolerable. <laughs> That's 
so <laughs> funny. Oh, thanks. Because- <laughs> <laughs> There's that ah geez moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, the 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 one thing which uh, you're which you first like told, which is actually true. This is how true it is is we played tennis together and you kicked my fucking ass i was terrible but you um have been joking around about just kicking cis women's ass oh, at yeah. sports i i have a whole joke where i just brag about all the cis women's ass i kicked at sports uh, today <laughs> that is so funny which so by I- which by the way like i'll do that to like rorious laughter and then like i'll do some joke about how men are dumb and like ugh, everyone just shrinks down like a little pussy it's like, oh, <laughs> weak yeah yeah you can uh yeah make fun of women being weak but they they, they oh, don't yeah. want to they don't want to admit their brains are weak it's pathetic yeah i yeah. don't know i don't know you guys I can ju- call me dumb for the next hour if yeah, you no want problem. <laughs> yeah. don't bother me Sorry, I, it, honest, i've it said so many me. i've said so many times on this oh no podcast. brian he's one of the good ones oh, <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. i've said so many dude brian is like i feel like i'll i'll make these general assumptions about men on this podcast and brian's like no i'm like i i'm actually like Really like in touch with my feelings. I just, like he's I, I've had clothes swaps too, but that's like a punk thing for real. Yeah, but it's like because it's all band shirts. It's, and it's okay. like, I don't this like is what really. I'm learning from you. Is yeah. it's all a punk thing? Like punk men. I think like uh like a lot of my male friends were like into punk in high school and stuff like that, and that's why I get along with them. But, like they are more in touch with their feminine side. Like punk is feminine somehow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, a little yeah. bit like in its feminine energy like well, um, it's like being like being feminine is punk to them too like it's how you troll yeah well America because it's because it's um going against like what is mm-hmm. expected of them i fucking love punks like i got into hanging out with the punk scene in high school really late and god did i wish i hook up with them earlier it's <laughs> so where did you grow up? in south dakota oh okay yeah which is a shithole yeah. um, of the highest order. But like, God, <laughs> God, do I miss the punk scene? Like just hanging out, like, ha- like living in like, like I'll tell you like the one thing I do miss about being a guy is like living in a shitty house with five other dudes mm-hmm. with like disgusting couches on the porch, mm-hmm. like ashtrays that never get taken out mm-hmm. that are just uh, like, a, like a giant barrel full of cigarette butts. Like, I mean, it's a whole vibe. I, I love it. I I've done that as a woman. <laughs> 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 I've, yeah. I've done. I've I've lived with you know four dudes in the most disgusting house, uh-huh. you know, and like I don't mind living that way. That's why like every boyfriend I've ever had like hasn't minded asking me to move in because they're like. Oh, like she doesn't care. Like she, like yeah. I don't have to change my lifestyle at all to live with this woman. Like I'm not giving anything up. Like she's, uh, like it's so. I'm disgusting. Uh, <laughs> I Living pull- with my girlfriend, I've resisted every change, and they've all been better. It, like every change to my lifestyle that she's introduced, I've resisted all of it, and then I'm like, oh, this makes a lot of sense actually. <laughs> <laughs> what are the changes that she has implemented in your Just life? Just like besides nice, skincare, nicer things. We can yeah. yeah, skincare too, but we can like re. We don't. Ha- I don't have to just have the shit I have. Mm-hmm. There's other shit out there that I can replace. I mean, I've been hanging the same poster on my wall <laughs> since I was like 22. Yeah, like, yeah. we could take that down. Mm-hmm. And, I'm like, oh, this is a lot nicer. It's because there's a lot of energy with all that old shit. I'm oh just yeah, bringing all the bad voodoo in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if this is what it's like with you, but I feel like sometimes, like when I'm single, I like I don't think about it, and then um, someone comes into my life and goes, you know, you can respect yourself. Like you can, right. you uh-huh. can, you can have nicer things. Yeah, you yeah. can like take care Jesus. of yourself. <laughs> 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 it's, it's okay. I mean, I've been there. I'm not gonna act like I haven't. Uh, like, uh, but you know, it is a a nice feeling. I I'm trying to implement that into my own brain. My mm. um my boyfriend just went to New York for a week, and I was left to my own devices. Mm. <laughs> and uh, his voice was just like in my head all week, to where he was like, because I would constantly forget to take my medication, like my uh antidepressants and shit. I would constantly, I have glasses, I like never wear them and I would just end up like straining my eyes and being like covering one eye and trying to, and he'd be like, do you want me to get you your glasses? And I'd be like, no. And he's like, why do you insist on just living in torture? Like you can just make like. I literally just told you the bathroom was downstairs and you go, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'll just hold I it. Can't. <laughs> I literally, I insist on just making things harder for myself, but also it's at the same time me just being lazy. I, um, I know what you mean, though. Like, <laughs> I, I, I struggle with that, too. So, like, while he was gone, I actually, in my head, was like, Nicole, did you take your medication today? Why are you trying to read this without your glasses? Go fuck, get your fucking glass. It's starting to sink into my own brain oh. to where I'm doing it for myself, That's which awesome, is honey. a good thing. Um, but, yeah, it's... <laughs> I'm really bad at just like taking care of myself unless someone's like, bitch, take care of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you need a drill instructor for like hygiene. <laughs> I do. I really do. I'm, I'm and vision. I'm the most disgusting. <laughs> that came out wrong. I've always said that because you brought it up. <laughs> that wasn't a deep pull out of the middle of nowhere, everybody. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like, um, I do, uh, I am trying. I now I, yeah. I I'm, I'm trying to be you know a little bit cleaner, but even like Brian's like, don't use that bathroom. It's my it's my roommate's bathroom. It's not the clean. And I go in there and I'm like, this is cleaner than like I keep my <laughs> <laughs> shit. You know, yeah. like I keep like the cap off my toothpaste and the toothpaste just like fucking squirts everywhere, and I just leave it there until it gets crusty. <laughs> and, like, it's, it's, just... it's hard to clean your apartment. You gotta do it like every but, goddamn five but, days. But you know what's funny is like the minute someone is coming over, mm-hmm. I will make it spotless like i but if it's just for myself i don't give a shit like i don't i i do that with my car and yes. like i'll never clean it until like i have to give someone a ride and then i have to like quickly take all the like the fucking bubbly cans yeah that i just throw into the passion or you know side well and like the, like i literally have to be like go do something else and do not come don't look at me <laughs> like don't come around the corner until i finish this oh the worst is when they just if, like sit down immediately when they're yeah. like hold on i need to clear off the seat yeah every person who's ever gotten in my passenger seat just sits i'm like you're gonna stab yourself. Yeah, oh, you're like yeah, you're not even looking yeah. at. Give me a like, second. Like fossilized McDonald's cups. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I nothing like I feel so much shame when like uh someone just asks out of nowhere like hey can I get a ride home oh. and I'm uh, my brain just goes <laughs> fuck oh my God. like I'm like because yeah. I you don't want to uh, the worst was when uh the first time I met my boyfriend's mom oh no I drove my car and she met us in an Uber oh. <laughs> and <laughs> my car is disgusting I mean disgusting there's like stains that look like I got an abortion in the back seat like it's just so gross and also because like every time I parked in that parking lot by the uh by the comedy store for some reason I always leave my car unlocked because I have ADD and I'm stupid and I just like leave it unlocked and instead of going in and stealing shit because I really have nothing to steal this has happened twice <laughs> this has happened twice someone will open my door take whatever cup is in the cup holder and dump it out on my <laughs> seat what? and just leave it upside down I on understand my seat. that urge. I have urges like that all that, day like, they the just, time <laughs> that is what they do <laughs> Like, twice <laughs> twice that happened once with the coffee cup oh once with the soda God. cup I'm like this is something that people like just do they're just like waiting in that i imagine that someone's just like hanging out by that parking lot all day just like waiting for someone to leave oh, their yeah, door yeah. lock and being like this is my time like i'm gonna go turn that cup upside down i mean i get the impulse too i have this yes. i have a deep desire to like slap a plate of food out of somebody's mm-hmm. hands <laughs> Me too. Like yeah, I've yeah. Th- th- I, like I visualize. I've it. had that desire too. I don't know what that is. Like I always imagine it with Frank Castillo. Like <laughs> I, what I want to happen more than anything is like for Frank to be coming up with like a plate full of pizza and just be like, hey, blah, 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 and I just go slap. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's really uh, funny. I feel like there's something like deep down with Frank Castillo oh, that no. you're like, I just want to. No, fuck you just with know it. he's high and it would really he's, bum him out yeah, because he's, he's got the munchies. Exactly. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Frank just like hilarious. stomp on his pizza. On the <laughs> Put it out like a cigarette. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the urge I get is to slap cigarettes out of people's mouths. Yeah. I don't know why. I just Ooh, think that, it would be really. That's funny. hardcore. I love that. I feel like yeah. that, and I feel like it would make them so mad. Oh no, they would actually. They probably they probably just be like, "What the fuck?" and then go Dude. on back on the floor, pick it up, dust it off, and there's, put it back. There's in a mouth. TikTok account called Food Punch. <laughs> 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 Okay. I haven't thought about this in a long time. Okay. It's literally just a guy bum rushing people and just stomping on like whatever they eat. 
and like I think it's real because like they seem really this. angry because like like yeah. he'll smash like birthday cakes and shit. Like, <laughs> oh my god, I have to watch because that it's is the so real life funny. version. I do you remember that SNL uh, um, song where um, Andy Samberg was just throwing everything on the ground? No, he was just like I threw it on the ground, and it, it was just like it was it was so funny to me I when I was younger, and and like there was one where he just like takes a birthday cake and throws it on the ground, mm-hmm. and like um, it I, it was so funny to me. I feel like that's like the real life version of that of just like taking everyone's shit and just like <laughs> uh, too man. out of shape for that game. I don't think I could do the runaway part. <laughs> you know, so I feel like funny. you're like four steps away. Be like, <laughs> I always wonder. <laughs> just get my ass. Those beat. like prank videos and stuff that were like real popular like back in the uh-huh. day when they the, the, I remember the one and the guys would get so mad when the guys with like the good asses would wear like yoga pants mm-hmm. and then they would like bend over like in their the trunk of their car like they were getting oh, something yeah. out <laughs> and then like guys would be like checking them out and they would turn on them and be like yo bro you checking me out and the guys would get so oh. mad they'd be like what the fuck man like, so like they funny. were just tricked into being gay like they were so fucking mad yeah, I, I I tricked a man on Hinge with my transness the other day. It was very satisfying. <laughs> do you do you you like it when that happens? No, no. You know what happened? This motherfucker. I I I got dumped by a fucking song comic. Oh my! I God. match with him on Hinge. I've we're never fl- call- heard them call it song. We're flirt. <laughs> we're like flirting or whatever. Then he like drops off face here, and I'm like, Hey, I haven't heard for a while. What's going on? It's like, to be honest, I realize you're trans, and that's a deal breaker for me. And like, I hope you can find someone to love you. Like, I hope the same fucking thing, you piece of shit. What a what song a- comic. We, uh, w- I hope you can find someone yeah, to love I you. I can read <laughs> way more than you do. Man, Adam Sandler's an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god speaking of adam sandler this is a weird aside have you seen the movie little nicky lately not no. lately that is a masterpiece really. i love that movie it's though. so yeah. good yeah. i've brought up adam sandler movies countless times on this podcast yeah. i think because one he was my childhood crush mm-hmm. and two like i just i just think his like earlier movie like they just are they're so good yeah i love them i love adam his sandler special movies. was so good too. Oh, yeah it was so fun yeah yeah like and it was it was like one of the it was one of the most original stand up specials uh-huh. I've seen in a while. Yeah. It was really great. I and watched he, him work it out at Dynasty Typewriter. Yeah. And he brought out a notebook that was like half a foot thick. Yeah. <laughs> and had everything in there and I was like Oh, this guy works really hard. And that had one of those moments where it's like, I suck. Well, it, it, it could have been. It was just been, a Bible. It yeah. could have been. Like, you know when he did the Chris Farley song? Yeah, yes. It could have been an hour and a half of that. And, mm-hmm. like, people would have been happy. It could have been the I'm Famous yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. Like, so many people do. But it was, like, absolutely the opposite of that. Yeah, it was yeah. so cool. Yeah. The Chris Farley song was the uh, the the equivalent of the uh, I wipe my own ass in Big Daddy. <laughs> it was just, yes. what yeah. a tearjerker. <laughs> In a, in, a, yeah. in a really good uh yeah so good but i would say like the 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 yeah my uh we we met up with my with my boyfriend's mom for the first time mm-hmm. and after lunch my uh she, my boyfriend was like hey can we just give her a ride home so she doesn't have to uber oh, and i no. i just like was stuck in this place where i was like well i can't be like no and then but like my car was in embarrassing like so gross and i was like to the point where i couldn't even do like a quick cleanup of it there was like uh, like spilled stuff on the floor and so i just had to like give her a ride home my disgusting car and yeah but like your boyfriend is a punk kind of guy like he probably has a similar car he well yeah he's uh he's also disgusting but she's his (laughs) she's his mom he has she has to love him but like i (laughs) she can judge the shit out of him and she she's just such a well put together woman okay like she's just she's just so like well put together like you can tell her outfits her makeup like she looks great and I was just like, oh, she's going to think I'm such, I'm already not Jewish. Like, I'm fucked. <laughs> now I'm just a disgusting slob. Such just a dirty shit. Just stuff. a slovenly Gentile. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, she was very, she's very sweet. And oh, yeah. uh, we got along really well. Where's she from? Um, New York. Oh, okay. Cool. New York. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, yeah. it was, it was so embarrassing. Just like I, I the, the, just the, the hot i can feel my face get hot the minute someone asks for a ride home do you want to know like how a midwestern mom would handle that yeah like she would just look at your car go oh and that would be it 
you would want to kill yourself. Yeah. There's no bombast or anything, but like right. there's more passive. It's like a like a black hole of passive aggression. It's so dense. The Midwestern passive aggressive is so hilarious yeah. to me. Like I have a friend who just like should like. Oh no, but it's fine. It's yeah. it, like it's fine. That would that's her thing. It's fine. Like yeah. everything's fine. And I'm like, it's not it fine. No. It's for sure not fine. No, <laughs> like, it ain't fine. Uh, it's terrifying. Actually, like what's funny is like, um, people talk about whatever, like New Yorkers being aggressive and whatever. I find nothing more terrifying than just like a Midwestern white woman, mm-hmm. like just who is disappointed in you. <laughs> You know? Yeah, but they don't do shit. So, yeah. like, what are they gonna judge? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. You fucking ex Beanie Baby collector, go fuck yourself. <laughs> but it's yeah. but it's the, the Jello desserts. It is yeah. It is <laughs> judgment. It is ju- judgmentalness. Judge. I, I don't know what the word is. Judgmentality. Judge. What is the word? What are you trying to say? Judgmental. Like, this judgmentalness. I think it's judgmental. This. I guess. I don't know. It feels right. Um, it is like someone being judgmental. That is like the thing that causes the most anxiety in me like someone who is is judgmental but not like out front about it like not outright about because i love people who you know exactly how they feel about you you know like i don't even mind if you don't like me as long as it's clear like that you don't like me like if i if i have a clear vision of like this person likes me this person doesn't like me i'm never going to walk up and talk to this person because i know they don't like me and Like, because my big fear is, like, people feeling obligated to talk to me or feeling annoyed while they're talking to me or whatever. people like talking to you. I I mean... You're a perfectly reasonable person. People... Who's fun to be around. Thank you. But people is a very broad term. (laughs) You know, like, not everyone is going to, like talking no, to but everyone like it you goes, know they're, they're not everyone's gonna like you but like it's that doesn't mean they'll dislike you like that's, that's pretty true. rare that's true i i do get like this anxiety of of walking into just a, a room full of people and mm-hmm. just in my mind i'm wondering what every single person is thinking and that is so exhausting no, I know, <laughs> it's I the know most exhausting mean. thing it was a big day for me when i just like Decide, like I decided I was gonna like take people at face value and mm-hmm. like if they like say something nice they mean it not just think not like make up some conspiracy theory about right. how it was passive aggressive or they were just saying that to say it like what if I just didn't believe that yeah because like that belief wasn't protecting me right. from anything yeah that would be much less exhausting to just believe people oh, than yeah. what they say mm. um but I don't know do you like so uh, it's fun do you <laughs> Do you fear ju- I feel like you seem pretty fearless to me. Do you fe- uh, do you fear I judgment at all? I don't yeah, I do. You I do. definitely do. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. I don't know if I'd agree. But do you think that's gotten better cuz I feel like you have gotten more comfortable in in yourself and who you are now that you've um you know, come out as who you are and, and I mean, yeah, definitely. That's like I d- I definitely have to agree with that. But like it's you know what those I was telling Brian uh, before you showed up, they, um, like, coming back to stand-up was so scary, because I was like, oh, I have never been my fucking self on a stage before, and, like, to this day, it feels like, when, but when I say to this day, this was three months ago, yeah. starting, <laughs> but, like, it feels, it still feels really scary, and part of me feels like I don't know what I'm doing, or, like, of course. I don't know, yeah. I mean, I, like, I, I mean, I also feel that way, and I think the pandemic, uh, a lot of us just like had to take a long time off and then and then also reevaluate our lives without stand up and mm-hmm. coming back all as new people just in general. Well, again, okay, Brian and I were saying like a lot of what I I think people out here thought was passion mm-hmm. was really compulsion. Yeah. And pandemic ruined, like, obliterated compulsion for everyone. So people are really left, like, what am I actually passionate about? Yeah. What do I care about? And, wh- like, how do, what am I actually motivated to do by just wanting to do it and not motivated by, like, I think a lot of my motivations are, <laughs> were, um, like, anger and, and uh, like, needing to prove myself. Yeah. And that kind of stuff. And I don't feel that as much anymore, like needing to um, prove myself to certain people because it really Mm. was certain people Um, Mm. like uh, my dad, uh, you know, just um, certain people that I was friends with or love interests or whatever. 
Um, I hate <laughs> love interest. Mm. That's, that's <laughs> like I'm in a novel. Gentlemen call oh, yeah, all, all my lovers. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I was trying to, be, and now I've I've kind of let go of of needing just like one person's approval or whatever. So it's just I'm like, okay, what am I actually motivated by, and what yeah. and uh, what do I actually want to do? And um, still, like, trying to figure that out. And we've talked about that. Like, yeah, I feel like whenever sure. we've hung out, we're, like, it's been very, like, uh, you know, feeling a little lost and not knowing what's yeah. next. And um, it's that's a hard point to be at in your life. And I mean, you I mean, you remember, like, I was really close to moving back to Montana for a yeah. long time. You yeah. Know? So. But I think... Um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to constantly be reevaluating what you're doing or else it, or else if you're not reevaluating then you're just doing what you've been doing because that's all you know or you're afraid to actually like go inside and be like is this what I want to be doing? You and know? no names, but how many people do we know who are older than us who are still living that way and like Absolutely. their lives are not enviable. Right. I think people are doing comedy, a lot of them, like it doesn't even make them happy anymore. They're just like, well, I've just invested so much time in it and like, yeah. you know, whatever. I was so happy that you came back to it, that you like left to to make sure that it was what you wanted to do and then came back and then again, like seeing you again on stage Aww. and that you were still just as funny. Cause here's the thing, like you're still the same person. Aww. You're just more, I think you're going to only get better because you're more comfortable like in your own skin now. Yeah. Whereas I think the, the intimidation I felt when I first met you, I think was the fact that, you didn't feel comfortable, so you were shying away from yeah, people, which I, sure. I have too. People have told me, like, that they thought I didn't like them mm -hmm. when I first met them. But I was like, no, I was just, I'm just scared of everyone. Like, yeah. I just, like, can't. Well, I remember you telling me <clears throat> one time, you asked me a question, like, why aren't you around more or something? Mm -hmm. And, like, the answer was, like, because I've been, because I've been scared of all human beings since I was a toddler. Yeah. And, like, I, like, did not peel that away and look at it yet. Going out into the world is fucking terrifying it like is. it just if i have the opportunity to just stay inside i will and and then like social media makes it so easy because mm -hmm. you can kind of just create a life from like you can be by yourself and create a life that looks cool online oh yeah and like uh <laughs> i was like actually um writing about it today I started journaling um, <laughs> I was writing about it today that like you can I uh, about like editing your photo like people edit their photos and mm -hmm. there's a friend of mine showed me um an app that like you use to edit your photos or whatever and the first time I used it I was like oh this is just like fuck this is fucked up because like you can make yourself look like a, an entirely different person yeah. and then I was like no, I'd probably be happy just to make myself look like that person and then just never go outside so that people don't know that I don't look like that. <laughs> I would just be perfectly happy with people thinking I'm hot and then living as a hermit <laughs> inside <laughs> forever. <laughs> just like, um, cause, cause I don't know, like you see like whatever people will post those pictures like on, on dating apps and stuff of uh, like heavily edited photos. And I'm like, do you just, um, intend on, never actually meeting up with the person in in person or because I did that too and I think that was part of the reason I never went on dates off of dating apps because I I knew I didn't look like my photos <laughs> and I was like I'm, I'm gonna disappoint them like oh, for sure on. well um, also with like the editing it's fucked up when comics do that or feel the need to do it because it's like we're, we're, we're clowns <laughs> man yeah. I gotta be a for hot real. clown yeah it sucks I, by the way I met a lady last night who was a clown dominatrix <laughs> Oh wow! Oh yeah, that's that's very much a thing. <laughs> that's terrifying. Yeah, I think I I would uh, run straight the other way if I saw that. Appa oh apparently, she would come out on stage with like a big top hat over a crotch and like like pull it out, and there's a strap on underneath, and like squeak her nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a wonderful world she we should, live in. She should get a a, um, a strap on that honk so she can yeah. just honk her dick. 
<laughs> Does the no, flower no, shoot mace? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the balls honk. So whenever you're fucking someone, they just. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. You know what? Like, I think we should start just thinking of how to make sex funnier. Because, like, once you're, especially once you're in, like, a serious relationship and you're just, like, having uh, sex with, with, you know, someone you've been having sex with for years or whatever, Mm -hmm. I think instead of making it kinkier, you just should make it hilarious. Like, just make it so fun. Although, like, I don't know. I, I have been in situations where I have made guys laugh in bed and they just, like, couldn't. Like, they, that's it's a different part of their brain. Like, they're not hard while they're laughing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, if I'm doing a bit that's not getting them hard. Oh. <laughs> like, oh I, there was, like, there was um it recently uh, where I was doing bits and bed and like he was just cracking up and then i was like and then i just switched modes and i went down to go to suck his dick and he's just still laughing and i'm like are you laughing at me i'm trying to suck your dick what are you <laughs> doing and he's like you were doing bits it's your fault and i was like, like what are no you doing bits what are, i mean i don't even know your the intimacy details. are you working out I do, yeah, or are you doing i do so many things there, your boyfriend deserves the, a well-polished bit like you don't know be what's working. funny i wish I really wish that I could say what the, like, I wish that I could tell the story of the funniest thing that I ever did in bed, but I, I cannot tell the story publicly. Oh. Sure. I guess I was asking, I is really it can't. physical material or you know, is it um, verbal? Like, both. both. There, I, I've done both. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, when I'm really comfortable with someone, like I, I get sillier and sillier with them. And especially like, Sex sometimes feels silly. It's a silly thing. And so sometimes I have to just acknowledge okay. the silliness of it. And I enjoy doing that. But I can also switch it off. Like, I can be like, all right, time to fuck now. See, that's Whereas, weird. like, God, whereas, and men are like, wait a minute. Like, I you're can't like doing just, the net while you're fucking people. I can't just, like, <laughs> switch I also have a thing where, like, I'll be, like, crying and then, like, be like, okay, I'm horny now. Can we fuck? And they're like, you are crying. <laughs> like, I just, like, I, I, can, uh, I can stay horny through everything, through every emotion. <laughs> oh, what a crappy it's X-Men. It's really a gift. <laughs> it's really a gift and it confuses people. <laughs> but, yeah. I, don't know. <laughs> well, I love that for you <laughs> but squeaky balls would be great oh no i agree yeah That'd be whole. i was thinking earlier when you were talking about the dominatrix or, or just bdsm getting mundane mm-hmm. i was telling you before that i used to take a bartending gig at kink.com which is like an armory in san francisco where they have a lot of events mm-hmm. and the funny thing was they flew this japanese guy in to tie women from the ceiling he was like the best woman tire i guess yeah. <laughs> he's this old guy <laughs> the in best a, woman <laughs> tire <laughs> he was in like a kimono and he was like uh, and i was bussing some tables and i hit my head on a woman hanging from the ceiling and i was like i just was in my mind i was like get the fuck out of my way (laughs) just like i was just in such work mode that there's women hanging from the ceiling there's people fucking there's like slave shit they were just like they were just like flies to you you're like oh trying to get around (laughs) the table it happened within five minutes like for five minutes i was like holy shit and then after that i was like get the fuck out of my way yeah yeah it happens quick yeah well i i think that's Really with like, I mean, well, and that's why people get so like it's it happens with porn. Like it's almost hacked to talk about it at this mm-hmm. point. But like with porn, it just like you keep having to get weirder and weirder into your porn because you just get used to it too quickly. Oh, yeah. Like you're like, oh, OK, like they're having regular sex. Like I'm not going to get turned on by that. I've seen that, you know, I, I started reading more like porn since reading transition. it oh yeah oh, like, man. like hot you stories are a woman and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I you're think, like, you fully transitioned you like, are yes, done exactly. and then you, <laughs> you've then, transitioned into romance then you think novels of, like old ladies like reading these books like by on a chase lounge or like on a plane or something like you guys are fucking perverts <laughs> 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 that is wild to me like they don't even switch the cover or anything like they're just like nah i'm reading 50 shades of gray right here yeah. right now oh, yeah they Ugh. bought it at a grocery store yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's an Albertsons next to the deli. <laughs> I will say the times where I have read um, that kind of stuff, uh, it is really, it is way hotter than watching it because you just get to like, 
Use your imagination. Yeah, which is, it's, it's, it's nice. It is nice. Nothing is yeah. sexier than the imagination. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this is like a porno reading rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really, like, I, uh, I wonder what it, like, I, I've, have you ever, um, met someone who wrote, like, fan fiction, like, slutty fan fiction um no i don't think i do they're always really <laughs> they're always really weird i heard but... jacob wrote an erotic anchorman three and it was really funny i wish i could find it it's so funny i love erotic fan fiction <laughs> well yeah they used to have that show the competitive erotic fan fiction did show. they yeah did you ever do that no you would have demolished that it was a show where they would literally they would like you would come in and you'd get paired up and be like you need to write a slutty king of the hill or whatever Oh. It was really That was a fun. show? Yeah. I didn't know oh, about this fuck. either. Oh, yeah. Brian, Brian Cook ran it, I think. They should bring that back. God, it was fun. It was that, so That fun. would be hilarious. They used to do it at Meltdown, then it moved to the Virgil. Yeah. Yeah, God, that was a hoot. Oh, oh, it was like a live show. Yeah, was it? yeah, oh, yeah. I thought you were saying it was like a TV show. Oh, no, no, no. It was, oh, a, wow. it was a live stand-up show. Accessible, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah you would have killed it. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to watch. Uh, like, uh, writing funny uh, fan fiction uh, would be... But I'd be like... I'd be scared to ever, like, if I wrote something like that, I'd be like, oh, now everyone knows what's in my brain. <laughs> like, now everyone knows, like, every weird thing that's in my brain. And, like, but the thing is, it's probably in their brain, too. That's why that shit is so popular. Yeah. But, like, you know, yeah, I do want to read about, like, aliens having sex. Like, that's 100%. Have you ever heard of ovipositors? No. What is okay, it? ovipositors is a fetish that people have where they get off on imagining that like like you know an alien when they would like penetrate you and lay eggs in your stomach they like thinking i have, I, I i i don't know they like well, they, <laughs> you know when that they, happens they, the yeah. aliens they penetrate you they, like. they like imagining that like aliens are like laying eggs in their stomach and impregnating them so okay. like you can buy these kits where they're like dildos and you make like little like jello balls i have and you seen shove this. It in your pussy and you squirt them in there and then you like give birth to i have seen that they're stuff. literally yeah they are uh they're they look like alien dicks oh, yeah. and then there's like yeah like a hole where you squeeze and just like <laughs> things come out and uh that is so interesting to me and what i love is like those toys like they're manufactured like they're not from etsy like they're manufactured in a factory by a dude who's yeah. like union is getting like torn apart yeah. by amazon yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's a break. whole yeah. industry it is a whole like People are, that like, we're all freaks. Yeah. We're all freaks. And even people that aren't, like, everyone, I, or not, I'm not going to say everyone, but I feel like it, we're at least curious about stuff. No, like, I, I feel agree. like when I hear about something new, I'm like, all right, I would try that once. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so, like, uh. Yeah, I've tried a lot, and it turns out I am just a square. Because well, I like like routine but run of the mill stuff. I you did try it, but I think yeah. Yeah. I think that's with me too. Like, and I think that's actually a lot of people. We're we're all very curious, and we're like, I'll try it, but and because you know, but then you realize, especially once you are, um, I feel like intimate with like one person, and and you're just kind of because I think that's a myth that like when you're with someone for a long time, you have to like spice, spice it up. up yeah and it's like no actually i think i need less of that when i have like an actual connection with somebody oh. um but, but like if it's like a a random person i'm like all right we need to do something to make this less uncomfortable because i'm not gonna look you in the eye mm -hmm. like <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna like make yeah. deep eye contact yeah, while so you just horn up your ass <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> Exactly. Let's do something weird because this is already weird. We're too strange or not even strange, but two people who are having sex for the first time. It's never like not weird. You yeah. know, that's no um, joke. But I don't know. That's are you more into S or M? <laughs> um, <laughs> Where'd you go? I, I, I do. I'm, I'm a switch. I do both. You do both. Yep. Switch hitter. Wow. Oh, yeah. Ambidextrous. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's a good time. That's cool. I didn't know that that I didn't know it was a thing. Oh yeah, both. Yeah, it's it's easier to like go to a party if you're a woman and dom, just because like I don't know, you never like people in these scenes are pretty cool, but it's like sure. I'm not I'm not gonna sub for just anybody, but like sure. I'll hurt anyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
That's true. I feel like I would, uh, I feel like if any, like, you know what? I would sub for a woman for sure. Oh, yeah. But I feel like it, not just like any dude, like, hell yeah, no. I like, know. I wouldn't go to something and just be like, yeah, any dude, tell me what to do. Yeah. Fuck that. Uh, yeah. But, um, a hot lady telling me what to do. I would, uh, yeah, all day, every day. Let's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. There was a thing, like, there's this thing also called top drop, where it's like your emotions just crash if you've been like doming for a while. And like, I was like, ah, and they're like, you gotta cuddle with people and practice aftercare and get a blanket and cocoa. I'm like, ah, whatever. I, I don't need to do anything. I know everything. Mm-hmm. And like, I was doing this stuff last night and I was like, yeah, I'm bad, whatever. I'm badass. Then like, I do one last little lady and like, I come to this guy I was playing with earlier. I'm like, can you cu-? I'm like crying. I'm like, can you cuddle with me for 10 minutes? Why does that happen? Is it like a, uh, like a, do you have like a chemical release the way you would with like a drug and then you're coming down from it? Oh, uh, like... yeah, kind of. Your emotions. Like I eat a lot like when I go to these. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I always need like some sugar or a sandwich. I get really farty towards them too. <laughs> Just because I get you jittery. could use that. Yeah, like I, I had, <laughs> I had. You don't do I, had, I tell you. I, I fucking I, fart. I, in I was getting spanked one time, and someone was like, "Why are you so tense?" I'm like, "I'm holding in a fart." <laughs> just fart in their face. Yeah, <laughs> that's a new thing. Just fart in their face, or or do it and then go, "Oh geez." Yeah. <laughs> Somebody oh, geez, Sorry about that. <laughs> By the way, growing up in my family, we called farts poozies, and I don't know if I've ever heard anyone describe them as such before i've never heard anyone just get i uh hate every name for a fart that i've ever heard i i don't know why i think uh um i had a an aunt who would say that they poofed i think i would have that's uh, a real aunt term yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um mana mana pia <laughs> yeah i think i've heard like a bottom burp a bottom, a bottom burp. What about a juicy gasser? Oh, Ew, God. I mean, I I like that better than like I like that better than like the cutesy names. I don't know why the right. cutesy names are like grosser to me. I like oh. it because it defies science. Than ju- a juicy yeah. gasser. <laughs> oh, this man like- is farting pure plasma. <laughs> we need to get the team from Langley down here. <laughs> yeah, there's two states of matter coming out here. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, that is. He's uh, shitting in photons. <laughs> <laughs> it's a particle and a wave. This is the nerdiest way to be gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's scientifically impossible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All trans women are dorks, by the way. Every single one of us. You know what? I um I think that's why I'm friends with so many. Dorks are the best people. I, I think we've talked about this. I think that's like, different than nerds. I feel like nerds are kind of assholes. Like dorks are interesting. Yeah. Yeah. N- nerds well, have an authoritarian streak in them sometimes. I agree. Like yep. Elon type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and I think they it's like a uh, I know so much, and you like you're stupid. Yep. Like it's more of like an a, an inferiority thing. I know more about Marvel than you. Yeah. And <laughs> Everyone I, dislikes me because I'm a nerd. It has nothing to do with my personality. Like yeah. that that kind of thing. And you know what? I think I um I think that I used to kind of be that person, um and. It's funny because I talk about, I joke about um, wanting to be dumb all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm like on a quest to just be like a dumb bitch. And I don't like, and I think the reason I joke about that and the reason I actually kind of mean it is that I was like the opposite in high school. I put like all my value in in like being smart and my grades and all of that stuff. And like, uh, I also was like a bitch about it. Like I've, I've talked, I've, I've talked about this a little bit, but like, uh, and I'm not proud of it, but like, it would be like a thing where I would see like a hot girl and be like, whatever, she's dumb and hot and I'm smart and not hot. And that's how things go. And I'm better than her because I value this and she values that when really it was just that I was insecure. Yeah. And I thought that that was all I had going for me. And so like, I just put so much value in that and i i did have an inferiority thing and i did call myself a nerd and i thought that that made me like better than everyone i was the same way yeah Yeah, and so now i just make it my mission to just be like a a dumb stupid dork who likes fart jokes like i don't i don't care anymore and i i want to get as far away from whatever that was as possible because i want to i want to read dumb books 
watch yeah. shitty TV. I don't want to read any more classics just to feel like I'm a genius for reading them. Yeah. You know, fuck all that. I, I really think that um, we should be kinder to ourselves about whoever we were 10 years ago and wh- you know whatever and um this isn't get this isn't like i'm not making any kind of statement about uh whatever political correctness and and people saying that we're 10 years ago or yeah. whatever but like but i'm saying is well you're not not saying yeah, <laughs> but, as, but as far as like people just like changing like i am not the same person as i was you know yeah. uh 10 years ago and i think there's a lot of stuff that like i admit about especially just my um the way that i was towards like other women when i was younger mm-hmm. and and just like being like really judgmental because i was so insecure and i think um also just like really i've talked about this like really needing the approval of men and i would 100 percent like throw a woman under the bus for that um when i was younger and like uh i talk about it because i think like uh that a lot of people are like that and it is like insecurity and it Mm -hmm. is stuff with the with like within you and uh and that can change and you can change and then talk openly about it and it doesn't make you a bad person uh because you know you were wrong and now you're changing that it's okay to be wrong as long as you you know grow up (laughs) i also think it's like i think it's very easy to i think like, when I look at, like, my town, you know, I was like, mm. oh, everyone was a dumb bucket of shit. But it's, mm. like, I don't, like, we're, like, I, you aren't. But, like, I'm old enough to kind of remember a time before the internet. Mm. And it's, like, it's, I think people really underestimate what a huge change that is. And, like, like you have all the information you could need. Like, before, yeah. like, you had your eight dumb friends. And yep. if none of you knew something, it wasn't to be known. And yeah. that's what it was. Like, it's, like... Like, people vastly underestimate the power of having all of the information possible in your pocket. Because, like, guess what? Like, my t- my shit little South Dakota town had a defund the police rally. Everybody walked out for George Floyd this year. There mm-hmm. are coffee shops with, like, pride flags in them. Like, I, and, yeah. like, I'm telling you that was unfucking heard of. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's the whole uprising in the Middle East thing. Like, all of a sudden, everyone is... is uh, the Arab Spring? Yeah. Connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because um, the Midwest is the Arab Spring with worse food. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, like it's just it's that uh, death to Egypt. (laughs) (laughs) Now, yeah, we do all know more about like, oh, and and, uh, I hate to admit this, but like I've learned so much just ever since like TikTok has come out. No, that's no joke. I I, I agree wholeheartedly. (laughs) Yeah, I I will scroll through TikTok and I I've learn so much about just uh you know what and 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 maybe people are gonna hate me for saying this i don't know because it's like cool to shit on the generation Mm -hmm. after you i fucking love gen z i do too. i really do i think they're cool as fuck (laughs) and i'm learning a lot from them when when people our age shit on tiktok i just think like okay you're old in your spirit like you sound like the people used to shit on tv you sound like the boomers who used to give a shit for being on the computer all the time it's the most popular fucking social network by leaps and bounds yeah it's quite like well it's just kids and dance videos no it fucking isn't and everybody's on it there's amazing content on it yeah you don't know what you're talking about you old bitch (laughs) it was it wasn't it because cool, every every well TV social media anything that's in its beginning stages mm-hmm. at first is going to have not the best content because it's starting out yeah. and so I think at first like in the very very beginning of TikTok it was a lot of lip syncing and dancing yeah. and that kind of stuff but, but now it's got the how to stuff that helps so much because YouTube has just turned into ad space. So every how-to on how to do anything is like seven minutes long so they can get an ad yeah. in there. So right. now on TikTok, in a minute, you can because I can be like, how do I pull the fuel pump out of my Honda? And I can just, I can literally pull that <laughs> right. up on TikTok, and it's a 
50 second video that tells me everything I need. Yeah. yeah. There's no like, hey, cl- like and subscribe. There's none of that going on. No. I love that. Also, and I'll be this bitch for a second, but like when I hear like, I don't know, kind of like some white cishet dude talk about how social media is affecting the kids negatively, it's like, I kind of think it's awesome that like people like me have a thing in their pocket that's going, no, your, your parents in school are wrong. You are right. Yeah. Got it out till you're 18 and get out of there. Well, and yeah, and that you are able to connect with people like if someone lives in a place where they are not uh like um there was this app that came out like during the pandemic that they like paid me to create content for and i don't know what happened to it like Mm -hmm. just like just like right before the pandemic i wrote for a quibi show i really tanked a lot of things (laughs) but uh this thing called katzenberg's in his mansion (laughs) going nicole (laughs) (laughs) this thing if if you want a show canceled get me on it Uh, what kink is quibi That is when you fart in someone's face. It's called fin doming. It's when you give your money away for no reason. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's so funny. God, they were so like, they were like, this is going to be the fucking biggest thing in the whole world. And you know what? I admire that. I admire, like, I want that. I want that, like, just blind confidence about myself like i want i want to just be able to walk into a pitch meeting and be like you're not gonna want to fucking miss out on me you know like you're like get in earlier like you're fucking (laughs) because i i feel like people are able to do that and i'm not able to do that about myself but uh um it's an airplane oh i don't know what the uh, like i've never experienced that before Mm clearly um no but i the uh um the, there was an app called stereo and um it was where you would just they would just pair you up with a random person mm-hmm. and then you would like have a conversation with them but it but basically it was like a live stream thing so like other people could listen in oh, yeah. it was such a it was an interesting concept like, is it omegle that as well it's yes, it was some it was like it was kind of like like a chat roulette kind of thing, but other people could listen in. Like right. it, can people on Omega listen? I don't know. My only experience with that is watching Ali Mikofsky post yeah. it and yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. this is thrilling. It's a, it, oh yeah. It's, yeah. it's that's hilarious when she does that. That's so it. funny. I didn't know she did this. I haven't heard of it. Yeah, yet. she'll just like talk to random crazy people oh, <laughs> on like funny. fucking Yeah, it's like chat roulette. I don't know if you can watch it unless she, but she screen grabs it and yeah. okay. posts it. So it I wa- don't know. It was ex- it was a lot like that except for like you couldn't see the person. It was just like everyone had kind of like an avatar and oh, then like yeah. you would talk to them or yeah, whatever and everyone else could listen in or and stuff and so like yeah it was very interesting and you would get some people that were like fucking nuts mm-hmm. and like you also like it was supposed to be um for like 18 plus but of course there were like children lying about their age on the app yep. so i'd be on there because like yeah they paid me to do whatever like an hour stream every week and I would be on there uh, and talking about, I don't know, fucking, yeah, like stuff we've been talking about. And there were just, oh, uh, people could like leave a voice message and then you could like answer questions or whatever. And it would just be like a child that is like, oh. you know, like, what are you guys talking about? Like, it's just like, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. But, but I remember um, like being paired up with someone and talking to them and they were like, this app is so cool for me because she was like a black lesbian in like the minute I, I forget where she lived, but she lived somewhere where she was the only one, you know? And she was like, I've been, I've been talking to so many people in LA because um, I don't think she realized that everyone on that app at first was from LA because they were paying us all to create yeah, content. Yeah. But like, she was like, I've been paired up with so many people in LA who I just get to talk to mm-hmm. and like feel, uh, heard because <laughs> I don't get that where I live. Oh. And so like, I do think the internet helps with shit like that of just like people not feeling like, Oh, I'm broken mm-hmm. because I feel like this because they see so many other people who also feel that way. And, uh, and I'll say, and I'll tell you this, I was reading an article recently about like, when people are like whining, like, oh, why are teenagers just on their phone all day? Why don't they go outside? It's like, 
Because there's nowhere for them to go. Like, if they live in the suburbs, odds are, like, they probably can't ride their bike anywhere. Yeah. Everywhere you got it, like, there are no public places, hardly. Like, you've got to spend money everywhere you go, which kids don't have. Yeah. Like, I, maybe you can go to someone's house and hang out, but, like, they literally don't have a place to fucking exist. I feel that way about here. I feel yeah. that way about L.A. Like, even though there's supposedly so much to do in L.A., I've never found anything to do in L.A. <laughs> like, uh, it, for me, I just, like... I'm like, I'll get on whatever, like, I've Googled, like, things to do, and it all sounds like garbage, and I don't want to do any of it, and it's just like, I don't know, going outside is hard. You can't, you can't have a bonfire (laughs) in a field in LA. Yeah. I love a bonfire. Yeah. I I do too. It's a good trash fire too. Oh, yeah. I saw one of those the other day at a bus stop. Uh, a uh, someone started a trash fire, mm. and then uh, the bus came up, and the lady immediately like pulled out a fucking fire extinguisher and extinguished it. But I had never seen a trash fire before. I yeah, I'd never seen one go up. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I mean, it was scary to see at first because I don't know how they work. I don't know if they can like spread or if it like. Oh, what I'm talking about in the south, <laughs> the people like and they don't have trash services. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So oh, they so just they burn just their burn trash. it? Because we had this redneck over at our house, and we were having a fire, and he just threw some carpet. And we were like, "What are you? We're hanging out. What are you doing?" And he's like, "Well, in Monroe County, we just burn our trash." <laughs> and then do they just like sit around it and have a bonfire? I guess it's extremely toxic. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, it's really bad. They're just like, ew, <laughs> dude. I mean, yeah. they're just like sitting around and breathing in the fucking. Uh, yeah burning whatever i mean it's god it's middle america man like i remember like playing around with guns when i was like Mm -hmm. 10 Mm -hmm. you know like you can hunt when you're 10 in south dakota me and my friends would like drive off into the woods at like 14 with just like an arsenal yeah just dicking around (laughs) i feel like i need it was awesome i need to yeah i feel like i need to go to those places more just so i'm not out of touch i grew up here mm-hmm. i do comedy here like i've spent most of my time here and i feel like i've no concept of what people are like elsewhere well, and uh but like orange county is like america though i mean it's not like yeah LA. orange county is uh, its own fucking animal it's its own thing like i don't even understand it i didn't even know it had the reputation it had till i moved out of it specifically huntington beach um mm-hmm. where i was from but uh yeah but they and it's like it's like you go to different parts of orange county and it has different uh reputation like it's just so it's a weird place orange yeah. county I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan of living around. Although everyone that I, it, like I am now really good friends with in LA or a lot of them are also from Orange County. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like it's, uh, we all like grew up there and we're like, we don't belong here. <laughs> and just like, which I think is the same with like, uh, um, a lot of people that I love out here are from Florida. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I don't know why I like Floridians get a bad rep because literally everyone that I know here that's from Florida is a fucking great. And they were like, yeah, because we got out of Florida. Like we're the ones who were like, I want to leave. Yeah. Although I did do um, a show in Jacksonville, like not that long ago. And man, it was fun. The, oh, yeah. The, yeah. The, the people that go out to comedy shows there, they're ready to hear fucking abortion jokes. They're ready to hear Like they don't give a fuck. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Florida is like a different kind of conservative. They're like swingery, polyamory, abortion, mm-hmm. but also there's a dark side to it. But yeah, yeah they're, they're fine with whatever. I kind of, I kind of like, I that. love touring. Florida. Yeah. I, I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, that, that sounds like my, uh, uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm a deep down a uh, Floridian. Maybe I don't know. You're hearing it's 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 swamp call. It's a it's just like <laughs> I, it's a big party there. You know, it I feel sure like it's is. just a big party. You're hearing the warbling call of Florida yeah. drawing you near. Yeah, I would like I I do feel like it would be fun to just retire in Miami and be one of those people. Hey, I could see that. Wear you. wear a Hawaiian shirt all the time. Yeah, I would do it. So I gotta, I gotta ask you the question that I ask every episode. Please. Uh, what do you think is the worst part of being alive? Um. Hmm. It is a. It's a. Uh, How seriously do people answer this? 
Uh, it depends on the person, but pre- seriously, people yeah, so answer it seriously. Like, waggity, smaggity, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I want to tell you what I really think, but Tom, I won't, and I'll die I mean, not telling first, anybody. The, the first answer Tom Goss gave was that he didn't know karate better. <laughs> but then, but then uh, later, which was the most sincere answer to anybody. <laughs> yeah, um, but then later on, he did a he did give a more uh, sincere answer. I think, um, I think the toughest part about being alive is. Um, I think it's like particularly challenging now to like live in the good of the world. I feel like it's very I feel like it's very cool to be like cynical and it's very cool to be like we're in the apocalypse and I just don't agree with that. And a lot of people who think that way, if you like challenge them on it at all, they get angry and it's like you want to give up. Like you want to give up. Yeah. I feel like it's a little tough like I like, post-transition, like, I, the more I've, like, shown up to life as my real self, the more I've realized that life is a beautiful place. Mm-hmm. And um, pushing back against a big culture that doesn't think that way can get a little tiring sometimes. I think you're right. It is cool to to be that way and, and, and be more negative and cynical. And I mm-hmm. think what it is is having, and I, I experience this myself, not necessarily with the world. I actually do kind of like to generally think that people are good and and that the world is good and all that because if I didn't think that way then I would like want to die all the time like you know because I I I I, I've been there where I've been like oh everyone is shitty and everyone is out for themselves and the world is evil and whatever and I just wanted to kill myself all the time yeah I mean like I kind of stopped watching the news or like stopped going on Twitter for that reason because like I'm not helping anybody and like like, look, when I live in, like, the actual, like, lived reality of my life, it's great. Like, do, do you know how many people from South Dakota have given me shit about transitioning? Zero. Zero. Yeah. I'm still friends with everybody. I'm friends with all their parents online. Yeah. Everyone's been so happy for me. Yeah. I, like, spent most of COVID just traipsing around red states as, like, a trans woman who was light years away from passing at the time. And, like, everyone... In Utah, people were cool. Yeah. You know? Like, I'm wearing my swimsuit down to the hotel pool, like, rock and bulge, and everyone's being nice to me. (laughs) I think, uh... Rock and bulge in Mormon country. Because that's hot (laughs) as fuck, dude. Um, No, but, like, yeah, like, I think uh, you generalize a place, and then you're Mm -hmm. like, no, but there's individual people in that place that are generally pretty cool, and I I think that... But I think the, the mindset of being negative, I think for me is is like with myself and and like expectation and I think it's like it'll be something where I'm like oh whatever like I don't even want to do that or I don't even like I'll be like very negative about it because I won't look stupid later when I had hope and then it didn't pan out or um I thought that someone was um a like a trustworthy person and they let me down or whatever like I, it's to avoid feeling like an idiot later, but like now I, I just, I, I feel like I have to tell myself like, no, you're not an idiot because you had hope for something yeah. or because you saw the good in someone yeah. or because you like assumed that things were going to go well or oh. whatever, you know? Um, but I think it's, it's cool to think that way because then you're never like, the the person who had hope when it was hopeless you know yeah um but like people who think that way don't get away from anything like they're not like they're not true. keeping pain out they're locking pain in like right. they're just in insh- like they're just ensuring they feel <laughs> shitty rather than you know avoiding that they'll feel shitty yeah and i th- think the word like my short answer to this then is the worst thing about being alive is being afraid because it's like easy and intoxicating yeah oh i feel that I mean, I, I think I'm starting to realize that, like, fear really does, like, govern my life in a lot of ways. And like yeah. I was saying at the beginning, uh, I am trying to challenge that because it is hard. That is hard to, like, live in hope and positivity and being like, fuck it, I'm just going to do this because whatever. It's hard to live that way. That's a very yeah. hard thing. Um, what do you think, like, helps you do that? Um, (sighs) 
I try to like, because I have like a lot of issues with God. Like I couldn't really get to a to um a concept of God that wasn't just like some version of what I grew up in. So I try to think like this sounds corny, but I try to think like I God is love. Like I literally not like not like God is more like love is God rather mm -hmm. than God is love. And I try to like worship the love in the world and invite that in. That's really, you uh, know, because like I feel like so if you sweet. feel like if you open the door to God, like a bunch of old bullshit, like from, you know, when you were six is gonna yeah. be, and, you know, and contemporary society is going to blow in through the door. But I feel like I, I think that way, too. Like it's um, but for me, it's I I think uh, light like I, I think of like a light like I think it's people have a light and Aww. that they like if they like step into it oh god this is so corny <laughs> but like but but really like i think people do have a light and the minute they step into it like you can uh fucking live such a better life and have such yeah. a better like fucking brain and i'm not gonna pretend like because i think i've said a lot on this podcast like oh yeah i'm better i'm better than i because i i used to be depressed and i used to be suicidal but like now I'm a lot better, but the truth is, like, I still struggle a lot, yeah. like, a lot, and um, recently I have been, um, but I think that it is, the the reason I am so much better isn't just because medication and that stuff, it's, it's um, learning coping mechanisms and changing your mindset, and I think that comes with getting older, like, I think, like, age just helps you kind of look at things in um a new way and yeah. experiencing things like that because when you're 22 you're like oh everything is the end of the world you know <laughs> like yeah is also is there anything grosser than like a cynical 40 year old i mean <laughs> i know ugh. some of them i get when you were talking about like the the um people being whatever cynical about the pandemic and all yeah. that stuff like there is a certain uh very cynical uh male older comic who constantly dms me on instagram to like tell me that the world is fucked and like why like and that i'm in denial when like i've never said anything like i've never said anything about that and he's like you're in denial about like what's going on Ugh. and look this is a very sad man who is a veteran and and is uh you know um seen a lot and whatever so i don't like blame him but like it just living in that must be exhausting and you know what i find it's really fun to troll those people like i i'm not saying eddie pepitone is like what you were saying but like mm -hmm. he definitely gets off and like ah oh, the corporations are fucking you know the whole thing i love just like there was like i would always come up to him at the store and i would just say something like hey eddie you know pink berry has this new peanut butter flavor for the fall <laughs> it's pretty awesome buddy ah oh, it's just corporate slop they're not gonna i don't know man it's pretty good <laughs> And then he like gets on stage like you got the pink berry with the peanut butter. <laughs> I I love that. I think like the best way to deal with really any person mm -hmm. um is to not take them too seriously. Yeah, exactly. I think I've learned that just in general. Anyone that I've ever been scared of, anyone that I've ever been like uh um intimidated by whatever, just like uh I realized through comedy and the people that like just kind of don't take them too seriously and then they take themselves less seriously yeah. and I realized that with with my dad like we would disagree on so many things like we would just fucking go at it like yeah. bump heads and like until we'd be screaming at each other because we had to, whereas like now if he says something that's like uh makes me angry or like something because you know he was like a, a trump supporter and all mm. this stuff and um and i think a lot of times he would say stuff because he knew it would like get my go and he like wanted to yeah. like make me upset or angry and so now i just like make i i don't take him seriously yeah i don't take him seriously and i'll make a joke and then i feel like um that makes him take himself less seriously there there was a moment uh when uh we were watching we were watching football and uh my my boyfriend was over watching football with me and my dad and my mom and my mom got up off the couch and somehow like the controller in the in the couch like made the tv switch off or do something like that and my dad was like are you fucking kidding me like he just got mm. so 
mad and my boyfriend was like how fucking dare you get off the couch <laughs> like ah! how and then and then like uh like two seconds later like it was back on and he was like oh my my boyfriend was like oh my god crisis averted like mm. oh thank god and like you know then That's my awesome. dad switched immediately from being like angry over nothing to laughing and mm-hmm. being like oh yeah I'm being ridiculous so I think like if someone's being ridiculous the best way to deal with that person is just making them see how ridiculous or I think being. like being really like dispassionately literal about it too <laughs> like my dad will do this like my dad will do this thing where like like when I got my name legally changed no he, he's gonna like change like my name on his will mm-hmm. you know so it's like hey Fief, I'm gonna go change your name in the will I'm like okay well when I when I get because need like a million documents you know yeah. like when i get all the documents I'll, I'll i'll let you know and then i get a text the next day like so so they need your social security card they need your new birth certificate and they need this like it's always something i'm like yeah dad of course they need like my identification documents like they're not <laughs> gonna just take your word on <laughs> this is surprise you <laughs> yeah uh uh, you could they're not gonna make it so you can just be like oh yeah I, hey hi hi i'm brian vokey now yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> like you know like i i'm gonna steal his entire identity it's yeah. available if you need it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, i'll take someone else's yeah. uh, <laughs> good, good call <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like uh i do feel like if i were if i ever needed to like go on the lamb or whatever yours would be like a good uh in- inconspicuous you know <laughs> name to take yeah because yeah, no, no, not at all. Not I'm, at the, all? I'm like the only Brian Vokey in America. Oh, are you? And oh, and yeah. also, yeah, there is a lot of record of you. T- you were like in the military. Yeah, and shit. A lot I didn't know you were in the military. Yeah, yeah. What branch were you in? The army. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. For Thank some you. reason, I see you as someone who's just always been like just under the radar. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have social media until fairly yeah. recently. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, it's been like five years at this point, but still pretty recently. I was not on the internet. It got a phone late. Yeah, all that. Of that anarcho punk nonsense, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that anti technology stuff. Do you think? Well, do you think that when you got on social media, it made you sadder? Uh, anxiety, yeah. I mean, there's like there's a hundred percent proof that the the anxiety yeah. is yeah. up in people. Yeah, like yeah. there there are positives, like you said. There's how to videos, and you get to connect with people. But at the same time, you also compare yourself to people. You like, yeah, yeah. I'll post something and then delete it immediately because I'm like, oh no, people are gonna think that that was a weird thing to post, or that's like embarrassing that I just uh, mm-hmm. promoted something or yeah, posted yeah. a bit that like wasn't very good and. Uh, or whatever, it, like it just it does create a lot of anxiety immediately. Don't uh, I mean, for you, me. like I mean, it's like you wouldn't just go on TV and do like whatever just pops in your head. Like you are mass communicating. You That's know? true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess you do have to think of it as really just a content generator yeah. <laughs> in general. Like you can't take it seriously as like, um, as like a a life thing. Uh, I think it's very funny that like 12 years ago, uh, there was a, I, I had like a Facebook memory pop up and it, it was just like, I said some shit like, uh, like, Oh, I had a really long day and now I'm tired. Like with like a smiley face. Aww. And then like, I was like, <laughs> and it was just like so sincere. And like, I was like, I would rather someone find a racist tweet from 12 yeah. years ago <laughs> than fucking this shit. What the yeah. fuck is that? Uh, because like, <laughs> I'm really tired. Cause I've been yelling at them. <laughs> <laughs> The, yeah, like the the uh, when you when I, uh, you first get on social media, you're like, oh, I'm so and and like people that are like you know forty and fifty on Facebook like still do that, like oh, they're yeah. still like just very sincere and they're just like, I uh th- this is my kid and we went to the grocery store today and like whatever. It's like, okay. like all the people I knew from high school are still on Facebook. Like Facebook is like a wonderful place then because it's just them like and their babies and they're doing magic shows. I never. A friend of mine is a magician. He's doing really well. He got a whole cart. My boyfriend's in his 40s, and so he's like, that's his main uh, fucking, and I always make fun of him for yeah. it. I'm like, why are you on ins- I mean, why are you on Facebook? Like, and, uh, you know, like, involved in, like, Facebook groups and stuff. Mm. It's very cute. Facebook groups. Because, uh, yeah, like, all the, all the people that I know that are on Facebook are just, like, my family, and they're, like, old. Yeah. <laughs> whatever but it, it is a more i guess it is a more like comfortable place than like instagram where it's just like everyone's hot and doing things and like 
You're, uh, I just, oh God. I mean, let's not pretend people are a little wilder on Facebook than they are on yeah, the other social media. For so. sure. Uh, maybe, may, I don't know. Like, I just, uh, I just have like, I unfriended anyone on Facebook who was like, you know, would piss me off. And mm-hmm. so I feel like it's all just like people posting pictures of their kids and like that's it you ever get someone like you kind of know like just say something dumb or annoying on some post you did like i'm at a point now where it's like you're just gone you don't get a second chance i love the fact that you can uh just delete people i feel like that was never that wasn't a thing before where you could delete other people's comments on your stuff i don't know if that's a thing on facebook but on instagram you can delete someone's comment i love that i do too because like uh before like if someone like says even it would like i wouldn't i don't even care about like if someone says something mean like whatever i'll leave it there uh mm-hmm. but like um it's when <laughs> someone like tries to like it, especially now that i do like that i'm a comedian people will always try to like make a joke Ugh. on your thing and it's like it's never good no. <laughs> and like or especially if you're making a joke then they'll try to like make a joke back to you and you're like yeah. you're Ugh. ruining it like stop it don't tag my joke like Ugh. fucking uh whatever your name hot dog uh one two three like yeah. don't like there, you don't there need... is no need to add to my posts they are yeah. perfect <laughs> i literally had someone i literally had someone do that and then comment again i made a joke off of your joke you're welcome and i oh. was like okay i'm deleting Ugh. these comments and like blocking you like you're, spo- <laughs> like like you're supposed like... to like you're supposed to like whip your glasses like, off be like my god that's dynamite uh, yeah i would have rather i would have rather he like called me a fat bitch like i <laughs> like i like don't fucking be proud of yourself for making a bad joke because because oh. you know it's just some like it, you know it's just, i i know it's just some dude who's like i can be funnier than this female comic like i get i feel like i get that so much yeah. where like they're just like i'm gonna be funnier than you because you're just a bitch yeah. you know <laughs> like i don't know For sure. but uh those are the comments i delete i don't care about the uh the ones that am, are mean because that just uh gives more traction to my posts and uh, oh yeah yeah they're helping they really ha- are haters helping. are fans yeah know? they are, they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well, i would love if you just turned into like a big like obnoxious like kevin hart motivational person like hey haters are just yeah. fans everybody <laughs> i am i'm moving in that direction i you know what i'd rather be like because i i you're right like it's not cool to be that it's not cool to be that just kind of like positive like whatever thing but I like that so much better than whatever the fuck I used to be. Just like I a agree. fucking sad sack. Like I'm, I'm, uh, I'd much rather be just like the corniest, uh, um, most positive person. You know, uh, Jamar Neighbors. I want to, I want to get him on this podcast. He let me stay at his place while he was in New York for two months. Oh yeah. And I always talk about this, but I learned so much about Jamar in the because Jamar I always saw as just like someone who just like doesn't give a fuck about like anything and he's just so funny and whatever but I, I i i i um i start staying in his place and first of all he kept nuts to feed the squirrels outside of his apartment <laughs> like he just that. wanted to feed the squirrels that's his mike tyson thing yeah. and then yeah and then <laughs> the, the, yeah he's very and then the other thing was just the wall was just full of notes to himself that was like my mental health is fire <laughs> <laughs> like oh, shit like that where awesome. it's just like and i was like i love that you do that and he was like yeah man you just you gotta just like fucking hype yourself up and like you know like and he he's just like he's got a real set of tools for himself that help him like i i always think of people who like don't give a fuck it's not that they don't give a fuck about anything it's just that that they are so they hype themselves up they're confident in themselves and they do so much work on themselves that they don't have to give a fuck about what other yeah. people think. And then, uh, that's he, when you're like the most powerful person. That's he why he's a so long f- way to describe a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> Jamar is the funniest person. He's I've ever such met. a yes. funny, sweet human being. And mm-hmm. it's, uh, and like, I didn't realize that it was because he does so much work on himself mm. because I always just saw him as this goofball, you yeah. know, like, uh, but yeah, I think that, that stuff is really important, as corny as it feels. Uh, yeah, for sure. Is there anything you want to plug? Um, uh, you can follow me on TikTok. I'm at Fifi oh, yeah. Dosh. She's so funny on oh. TikTok. You got to follow her. Thank you. And, um, uh, I'm at Fifi Dosh, F-I-F-I-D-O-S-C-H. Um, at the Comedy Store every week. Um, 
That's what's up. That's all I got going on right now. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll be on Dan Harmon's Strange Planet coming out sometime this year. So. Amazing. Thank you. That's fucking awesome. It's a voiceover stuff. Yeah. Love that. I, I've All I've heard is just how fun voiceover work is and just that, that it's the best thing that you can uh, get. Like, it's the best gig you can get. I had a really just good being time. A voiceover. It was fun. That's fucking awesome. Congrats. Yeah. Thank well, you. Well, thank you so much for doing the podcast. Yeah, I'm really glad you had me on. I love you. I love you, too. Mm. I, I feel like the podcast always always ends with these like weird love fest between me and my friends <laughs> kyle clark ended it with i want to plug mine and nicole's friendship and i was <laughs> like why does everyone get so corny on here <laughs> but i love it um uh but thanks for doing it. and uh yeah this has been uh everything hurts everything hurts everything hurts fucking life sucks everything hurts